Page 653, right there. I'm oh, sorry, my, I unzoomed out. Okay, 653, okay. <clears throat> so what we're going to look at today on page 653 is we're going to use proportional relationships, which is like, Mr. Witt, that's what we've been doing this whole time. Why is this special? Well, we're going to apply them in situations that you know, where we maybe can't measure certain things, where we're unable to measure things. So um, the essential question is, how can we use similar triangles to solve problems, all right? So in this little explore here, we're going to kind of like introduce ourselves to this idea of indirect measurement, okay? So in this explore, you'll consider how to find heights, lengths, or distances that are too great to be measured directly. That is, with measuring tools like rulers. Or they might not be too great to measure, but they might be uh, in, like difficult to measure kind of things, okay? So indirect measurement involves using the properties of similar triangles to measure such heights or distances. So for example here, if you look at this uh, flag, okay, this flagpole, to measure the height of a flagpole, how could we do that, right? If you think about it, it's like you can't go up to walk up to a flagpole and then take like a tape measure and just go, you know, like you could with someone's height, right? If you want to measure someone's height, you stand against the wall, you mark the height, and then you measure, you know, the height up to the mark. But for the flagpole, you have to, like, climb up to the top of the flagpole, which is, like, pretty dangerous, right? And then, like, measure that using, like, a measuring tape or something. Or a ladder, that's true, right. But it's, like, that's a lot of work to do that. But instead, we can use similar triangles, all right? And, in fact, this actually, does anyone recognize where, where this is? New York City. This is not, I don't think it's New York City. I don't know. I think... I think that's Baltimore. I think that's the, um, oh, goodness, yeah. uh, the, where, like, Francis Scott Key, like, wrote, you know, the um, Star Spangled Banner or whatever. Or Francis Scott Key wrote the, uh, but anyway, I think so. I think it is. You might be right. It might be New York. I could be wrong, but I think it's in Baltimore. Okay. You think so, Boonesboro? Yeah. yeah, maybe, maybe. But now that I'm looking there, Ikeva, I do see a lot of yeah. skyscrapers. So it might be New York, and I could be pretty wrong in there. So it might be New York. All right, anyway, let's continue on here, though. So during the day, during the day, sunlight creates shadows, right, as shown in the figure below. All right, the dashed segment represents the ray of sunlight. So, right, when the sun kind of, like, is coming down from here, it's going to create, you know, these rays of sunlight that then cast this shadow of the flagpole right here. What's okay? The Sorry? The, the shadow would be, like, this side right here, right? Because the sunlight's kind of coming down this direction and then the shadow's right there. Okay? So, what kind of triangle is formed here by the flagpole, its shadow, and this ray of sunlight? We, got, we have a right triangle, right? Sorry? Well, this is the setup. This is the setup. Okay? So here's, again, this is like the ray of sunlight. Okay? And then this is the shadow of the flagpole. Just so you guys can get kind of an idea there. Okay? I'm sorry. I'll zoom in some there. Of the flagpole. Shadow of the flagpole. Okay. So that's you know the, the kind of the, what we can see, right? If we want to see that. Now I w today there's not really any sun, so we wouldn't be able to see the shadows and stuff like that. But anyway. So uh, letter B. Suppose the sun is shining again, right? And you are standing near that flagpole, but out of its shadow. Okay. You cast a shadow as up as well, right? So you can assume that the rays of the sun are parallel. So what do you know about the two triangles formed? All right. So, well, we know that these two triangles are both what kind of triangles? Right. They're going to be right. But we also said that the rays of the sun are parallel. So that means these dotted lines, the rays, they will be parallel, right? So you can put little, like, arrows there to show they're parallel. And who thinks about this? <coughs> who thinks about this? Yeah. Well, um, I guess... I don't know, scientists maybe, or I don't know who maybe come up with this. This is probably like an ancient, you know, uh, use of mathematics right here. All right. So we have some parallel lines here. 
Can we say anything else about these triangles besides what I already have drawn in there, that the two sides are parallel and that these two angles are going to be congruent? Can we say anything else? So yeah, we can't necessarily the, say they are isosceles, right? The length of the shadow does, isn't always the same length as the flagpole, right? What else can we say about these two triangles? Okay. Well, yeah, they are going to be similar, but we have to figure out why. And here's here's one thing. So again, the the my like our shadow over here, our shadow over here, it's on the ground, right? And the flagpole is also on the ground. And so this this line right here, we can maybe think of as a transversal. The ground is kind of like a transversal. Maybe I'll kind of like draw it in here, because both the flagpole and you know us, we're standing on the ground. So there's like the ground. And we have parallel lines. The parallel rays of the sun are crossing that transversal. So can we say anything else about these two triangles? They are going to be similar, but what are the... Oh, we, need corresponding we have corresponding angles right here. These angles right here are corresponding. So these triangles will be similar by what similarity shortcut? Which similarity shortcut? Oh, um, angle, angle. So that's right. The triangles... Okay, are similar by angle angle. <coughs> okay, these triangles will be similar by angle angle. All right, questions on any of this so far? Any questions on that so far? Well, what do you mean? How's it related? We're, we're, this is we're in the similar triangles. We're similar. Similarity unit, similarity unit, and so we found similar shapes. So we're just gonna get like this and like right, you'll see. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, kind of, yeah. So in the diagram, what heights or lengths would we already know? So in this, what heights or lengths um, do we, should we kind of already know? Again, if we're like this is us, right here, okay. What what kind of measurements will we already potentially know here? Yeah, we probably know our height, right? Okay, we probably know our height, and if we don't know our height, then that, we can put that in letter D here, what heights or lengths can be measured directly. So, for example, it could be, I'm going to put that in parentheses, our height, if we didn't know it already, right? What other uh, heights or lengths could we measure? So, yeah, the lengths of the shadow, right? And that could be the length of either ours, our shadow, or we could also measure the flags, the flagpole's shadow too, right? Because it's on the ground. That's easy to measure, right? We don't have to get a ladder. We don't have to climb a flagpole or anything like that. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Okay. So we can measure our height if we needed to, but also the shadow lengths. That's pretty easy. All right, so... We can find the shadows. We can find our height. So how could we then find the height of the flagpole? So again, if we, know, if we can find the measure of these shadows, and we can find our height right here, so we'll, we'll know this length, we'll know this length, we'll know this height, how can we then find the measure of that flagpole? Can we make those, like, fractions? Use ratios. Exactly right. We're going to set up some ratios here. Okay. Yeah, but like with what numbers? Well, right, there are no numbers there, but that's because we're using we're using a very like generic situation. Um, later, we're like in the next problem, we're gonna actually do it with numbers. Okay, but right now we're just kind of like saying, this is like the plan. This is what the plan is. Okay. So how can we use similar triangles to measure the height of the flagpole indirectly? Um, set the ratio of the shadow lengths so we're going to set the we're going to find the ratio of the sh lengths of the shadows and we're going to set that ratio of the shadow lengths equal to the ratio of what so we're going to take the shadow lengths of ourselves and the flagpole and set that equal to the ratio of what What other measurements are we going to compare there? 
you know, we're going to set the ratio of the shadow lengths equal to the ratio of the, of the, well, not the tree, when we were talking about a flag, but the flag and our height. Or the flag pole and our height. Okay. <clears throat> and then we can measure the height of the flagpole using those similar triangles without having to worry about climbing the flagpole or, you know, getting a measuring tape long enough that's going to go all the way to the top of the flagpole. We don't need to. We can just use those similar triangles to do that without requiring us to actually go up to the top of the flagpole. Okay? So that's the idea there. All right. So that's pretty powerful because now we can measure the heights of all sorts of things without actually having to go to the top of those things or um, going across them and stuff. All right. So let's take a look here then at actually doing that. Let's actually do it with numbers. Because right? it, get, it gets kind of like, you know, a little too much maybe if we're just trying to like keep all that in our minds. Let's actually do it using some numbers here. Okay. So in explain number one, you can see it says finding an unknown height. It says find the indicated dimension using the measurements shown in the figure and the properties of similar triangles. So, letter A here, it says, in order to find the height of a palm tree, you measure the tree's shadow, and you can see it's 7.2 meters, and at the, at the same time of day, why is it important to measure the two shadows at the same time of day? Sun. What's going to happen if we don't do that? The shadows will change, right? Your shadow's length changes depending on what time of day it is, okay? If you guys are, like, you know, out practicing uh, sports or something like that, late in the evening when the sun's low, your shadow gets really long, but if you're, you know, out at noon, your shadow is really sh small because the sun's right above you and stuff like that. So um, that's why it's important to measure these two things at the same time of day. So anyway, there's the tree's shadow at the same time of day as the length of, and you measure the shadow cast by a meter stick that you hold at a right angle to the ground. Find the height h of the tree. So there, the meter stick is on the ground as well, just like the tree's on the ground, and the one meter stick casts a 1.6 meter shadow. So... Are these two triangles going to be similar? Well, they both have a right angle. And remember, because they're both on the ground, we're going to have these corresponding angles right there congruent as well. So will these two triangles be similar? Yes. By angle, angle, right? So they will be similar. All right? How do you know that corresponding one? Why can't X and A be Because X and like these two sides right here, they, I mean, they are going to end up being congruent, but these are not crossed by the same transversal. This, this side, because again, these two things are parallel, so, but the ground is the, is the same transversal for both, so that's the idea. All right, so, Valerie, 1.6 here, what does that match up with in this triangle? You got it. So we're going to put 1.6 over 7.2. And we want to find the height h of the tree here. So what's that going to equal value? What's the other proportion or other ratio we're going to write? One, One over what? h. You got it. Great job. Mm -hmm. You can use x if you want. It says find the height h, but if you use an x, I'm not going to like take points off or anything. Okay. Great. Thank you, Valerie. And so then, Skylar, at this point, what do we do? Okay. 1.6 times h equals what? 7.2 times 1, which is just, yeah, 7.2. Very good. And then last step there, Skylar, what do we have to do to both sides? Divide by 1.6. 1.5? 1. 1. Thank you. 1.5, and then, Skylar, what are our units here? 4.5. Oh, 4.5, sorry. Okay, 4.5, what are our units? Meters, that's right. And so there it is. The height of that tree will be 4.5 meters without having to climb up into the tree, you know, and potentially hurt ourselves. 4.5 meters. How do you meters. know, like, how do you know which one to, like, like, when you do, like, the cross, like, multiply, how do you know which one to put in which spot? Like, which number? So how do I know to put the 1.6 on top and the 7.2 yeah. on the bottom? Yeah, and then, like, the 1 and the 8. Okay, great question. So I kind of prompted Valerie when she first did this to say, okay, Valerie, so the 1.6, what does that match up to, the 7.2? Now, did Valerie have to say 1.6 over 7.2? No. no. She could have said 7.2 over the 1.6. Okay. So you understand, though, that these two match up. These are like the corresponding sides, right? right? 7.2 and 1.6, those are matching sides. Right. So it doesn't matter whether you do 1.6 or on top or 7.2 uh, on top. 
But then once you pick that order first, so once Valerie said 1.6 over 7.2, then when she went to compare these two sides. So you're doing the smallest on the big. In this case, yes. Once she did it this way, she then had to say 1 on top, H on the bottom. Why? Because 1 was from the smaller triangle, just like the 1.6 right. was. Okay? But if you had done it reversed, if you had said 7.2 over 1.6, then this would be H over 1. Right. Okay? So they're just corresponding things. That's the key there. Always match it up. Okay, let's try the next one here. Letter B. Okay? So let's see here. Um, Garrett. So here's our situation. All right? Sid is 72 inches tall. He stands near the flag. Uh, Sid's friend Miranda measures the length of Sid's shadow and the flagpole shadow. And we want to find the H, the height of the flagpole. They kind of already have it set up over here, but I'm going to have you set up for me. So, Garrett, what's one uh, ratio we can set up here? So, what over what here? So, 128 and H, they are not corresponding. What does H correspond to over here? Always try to match up matching parts from the two triangles. So, H over what? 72. There you go. H over 72. All right. H over 72 and then equals, what's another ratio we can set up there, Garrett? You got it. Great job, Garrett. Exactly. Right. <laughs> or Miranda should make Sid climb. I don't know. Whatever. We'll see. All right. So, then, Garrett, now what? To solve this, what do, we do to, what do we do now? Cross multiply. You got it. So we get 48H equals, and then woof, 72 times 128, 9,216. And then Garrett, last step. Oh, sorry. I got it. Divide both sides by 48. You got it. You get 192. All right, hang on with your... Uh, I think you're hitting the desk there, Kyle. You're making me oh, shake like God. an earthquake there. That's okay. <laughs> people, people watching this video will be like, oh my gosh, an earthquake. Mr. Wade didn't say anything. It's very dangerous. Okay. Is there an earthquake? There was. You missed it. Did you feel it? <laughs> Maybe next time. When? Kyle will let you know. All right, H, 192 inches is the answer. Now, 190, 192 inches, that's not uh, easy for us to picture, right? Because... Inches are very small, and 192 of them, it's like, how tall would that really be? So maybe we should convert this to a different unit of measure. No. Just, <laughs> so, so, how can we convert inches to feet, for example? Oh, you got to do Times 12 by 12. inches, you got to divide it by 12. So take 192, yeah, divide by 12. So we do 192 inches, divided by 12, that'll give us the number of feet. So what is that? 16 exactly? Yeah. Nice. So that's 16 feet. So that's a little bit easier now to maybe understand, right? No, you didn't have to, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, that maybe it's a little bit more easy to see. Like, ah, 16 feet. No, no. In this case, we didn't have to do it, no. Okay. All right, so now there's number three. I want you to go ahead and give that one a shot. Try number three. You got Liam. He's six feet tall, trying to find the height of a tree. So go ahead and give that one a try, please. Number three. Okay, so again, try number three there, the your turn. Try that number three, the your turn. Label for your unit. Uh, oh, okay. Wait, if we don't include that, we lose points? Yeah. Potentially. I would hate for you to lose points or something. I know, but I always forget to do like the. I always forget to like. Yeah, the unit. And I understand because, like, like you know, the majority of the problems we do, they don't have any units. So then suddenly when there are units, you're just like, oh, there's the number, answer, we're done. But yeah, yeah we wanna, if we're in a context, we want to, you know, kind of keep the uh, Just don't get your 
Okay. So let's see here. We're going to go to. All right. So, Jordan, let's set this up here. We have this triangle and this triangle, right? Both of these angles are congruent, and because of the sun, these two, like, rays of sunlight are going to be congruent, and that means these are not congruent, parallel, sorry, and that makes them these two congruent angles, okay? Shh. Excuse me, guys, one sec, please. So this 8, that represents the length of Liam's shadow, what does that match to over here for the tree? What side does it match to there, Jordan? Shh. Derek, listen up, please. So this 8 here for Liam's, from Liam in this triangle, where does that match up to over here for the tree? What side? What length? 28. So we're going to write 8 over 28 equals, and then there we have another one here, this 6. What does that match up to in this triangle over here? H. So we're going to put 6 over H, just like that. And now we set it up. Okay. I think you're oh, freeze is on. Thank you. Unfreeze. Magic. Poof. Stuff appears. All right. Then we cross multiply. 8H. And let's see here. 6 times 28 is 168. Divide both sides by 8. We get H is 21, and that's feet. Okay. 21 feet. Don't forget, guys, if you're in a context, so here we've got like meaning behind our numbers, right? They're not just like random triangles. So we want to make sure we keep those units. Shh. Okay. I used to have a math teacher um, that would say F T plus C and I N plus inch. Like just like it would be like just like they would just have a different like. No, he was like 21 oh. F T. Oh, oh, your math teacher. I thought you said you had a math T-shirt that said that. I was like. No. Interesting, no, Ikeva. No. <laughs> your choice of fashion is fascinating. But anyway, okay, a math teacher. I get you. He's the FT. That's weird. Was that a middle school teacher? It was some guy in middle school. Okay. So, all right. Wait, why was it weird? FT instead of feet? I don't know. It was because. Oh. Yeah, he, he would not say feet. He would say, like, 21 FT. And I'm like, okay. Anyway. Shh. All right. So. In real-world situations, you may not be able to measure an object directly because there is a physical barrier separating you from the object. You can use similar triangles in these situations as well. So, for example, what we have drawn here is a very crudely drawn uh, kind of like top-down picture. Okay, so this is actually supposed to be like a valley, a canyon. Okay, so the idea is that a hiker wants to find the distance D across the canyon. So from X to Y here. We want to find its distance d, okay? So she locates points as described. Okay. All right? Okay. So she locates these two points right here uh, at y. So she identifies a landmark x that's right across the canyon from her and says so she places a marker y directly across the canyon. So she's on this side of the canyon. And she sees, like, maybe a rock or a cactus on the other side of the canyon, right across, like, at the edge of the canyon there. And she's like, okay, and I'm going to place a marker right here at this point Y that's directly across the canyon. Okay? So now she's like, I want to find this distance. All right? At Y, she turns, hold on a second. At Y, she turns 90 degrees. So she was facing the X, and now she's turning 90 degrees. And she's going to walk, okay, 400 feet in a straight line. Now, believe it or not, you can actually like measure your pace, and for the most part, if you walk normally, you kind of keep that same pace as you walk, and so you can people can like kind of estimate distances by walking it out. And how do you know she's turning 90 degrees that way? Well, so you can kind of like you know convince yourself because like if you you know if I'm looking like you know straight this way, I can kind of convince myself of, like okay, this is again, it's all you're right, it's like eyeballing a little bit, but well, she's I'm like all right, like, about 90 degrees. She could have. She chose to do it this way because that's the way the picture's drawn. That's all. So then she walks the 400 feet. Let's see, yeah, right, exactly. 
Right. So anyway, so she places a marker Z 400 feet away, and then she continues walking another 600 feet for whatever reason. For whatever reason. Ramel, Jason, and so Ramel, you don't have to. Okay. You can say you can you can ignore them, and that person shouldn't talk to you. Okay. Well, you know what also is impolite? <laughs> talking when I'm talking. And that's what... Ramel, I could still hear you, and that means you're not paying attention. If, we wanna have, if you want to have this argument with me, we can talk about it after class. I'll be happy to argue with you all you want, but right now I just want you to be quiet and listen up so that way everyone else can pay attention. You should be listening to this too, okay? So, 600 feet, okay, this direction, and then she marks that with W, and then she walks until she gets to this point V and so that she can see Z through X like that. So she can see, so she likes, so she walks down from W so she can see that. So we, she creates these two triangles basically. Alright? Now the key here is to recognize, are these two triangles similar? Yes. Yeah. How do we know? I only see one pair of congruent angles here. Ah uh, yes, we have vertical angles at Z. So these two triangles are similar by angle angle. Okay? Uh, basically, but again, the idea, I want to kind of get you to understand this because this is, these are like actual legitimate strategies that, that, you know, people used to use, okay, and still maybe use it some, to some degree today to do these kind of measurements that otherwise would be near impossible to do. Oh, right. So you're going to like throw your calculator across the canyon <laughs> and be like, how far was that? And the calculator will say, because calculators don't work without people. I so. Siri. <laughs> Siri, you're going to throw Siri across. <laughs> That's expensive. That's an expensive measurement to make there, Jason. You can do that, though. Okay? Siri, how wide is this canyon? Throw me across. Mm, all right. So here we go. We're going to set this up. All right? Uh, so let's see here. So what are our corresponding sides here? Let's go to, so Haley, can you give me a pair of corresponding sides here? What's a ratio we can set up? Haley P. Yeah, sorry. So 327 over, D. yep, D. Okay, 327 and a D, they correspond. Very good. And that's going to equal then what other ratio there, uh, Haley? 600 over Josh and Dominic, gentlemen. 600 over 400, that's right. Okay, so there's your setup. And of course, to solve this, what do we do? Haley, um, cross multiply. You got it. Okay, so 400 times 327 is a really big number. It's 130800. Yeah, 130,000, and that's then 600 times D. Okay, and then we divide there. D equals yep, 218 feet. So again, without having to measure across the canyon, without having to throw our expensive cell phones across the canyon, we can get that measurement. Okay, without actually getting to that place, we can measure it. Kind of cool. 218 feet. All right? Walk off the cliff. That's that's a very that's you can only make that measurement once. Um, we may have a quiz on this before the term ends. Okay. We'll have a quiz, but no text. Okay. okay. Let's set up this last one here, and then we'll, I'll, get you, I'll get you guys started on your homework. So we're, we're just about done here. We're going to do one more, and I'll get you guys started on your assignment. Okay. So sh here's another similar situation. Now we're not talking about a canyon. We're talking about a gorge. I don't know what the difference between a canyon and a gorge is. I think it's similar. Uh, you know what? Maybe canyons are formed by like water and gorges maybe are formed somewhere else. Who knows? By a gore? A door. So, have you guys ever seen, there used to be, there used to be t-shirts you could get at like uh, American Eagle that said like Ithaca, because Ithaca, New York has like a lot of gorges in it. So it was like Ithaca is gorges. Gorgeous, gorgeous. It was a pun. They thought they were very clever at American Eagle, but anyway. Okay. So here's our, here's our situation. Again, let's set up these ratios. So let's see, Xander, can you give me a ratio of sides here between these two triangles that, what, that must correspond? 
We want to solve for D. Shh. Sorry. All right, well, let's start with D. D in this triangle right here. And by the way, you know, we know they're similar because we have angle-angle similarity here. What does D in this triangle, what does D in this triangle match up to over here? Yep, 35. So we're going to put D over the 35 there. There you just set up a ratio, okay? So, uh, and then Xander, what else? What's the other ratio we can set up there? KL and ML, right? So that would be what numbers? What over what here? You got it. Very good. And in the right order. That's very important, right? You could have said 42 over 24. That would have been wrong, though, because you did this triangle over this, so it's got to be this one over that one. So you did it right there. Um, when, so. when did they D over 35? Because, like, you're taking this right angle and mm -hmm. you're flipping it that way. Right. So it would be D over 42. Oh, 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 oh. All right, hang on. Let me finish this calculation, and then we'll get to your, we'll get to your question. So 42 times D is equal to 35 times 24. 840. Divide both sides by 42. And so D equals 20? Thank you. Oh, I actually know that. 20, right. Yeah, don't forget our units, meters. All right, so now, EKV, you had a question. Why doesn't the D match up to the 42? Right. Well, actually, I think Jaden. Did I hear you say something, Jaden, about the similar? Someone said something about the similarity. Well, there, it similar. So it says these triangles are similar. And if you look here, it gives us the actual similarity. Relate. Ah, I can't quite show it on there. Let me scoot over just a sweep. But okay, a bit more. There we go. There's our similarity statement. If you look here, you gave it J K. The first two letters. What does that match up to over here? And an M. Okay, so you got to be careful there with how things match up. Um, but, yeah, but, like, I get that, but, like, when you have your triangle, the, okay. and then you have the big one, yep. and you put the little one to the big one, yep. the D goes over the 42. Okay, careful. Look, look at here the 24. The 24 is between the right angle and the one congruent angle. Right. What does that match up to over here? The right angle and the one congruent angle, that's the 42. So those two match based on where they're positioned. Um, so you're not quite rotating it enough, I don't think, when you're doing it. That's all. When you're viewing it. Okay. Okay. I, I'll come over and talk to you specifically about it if you'd like. Okay. So I'll come over and talk about it with you specifically. Okay. The homework is going to be no, on page no 657. Homework. I would like you guys to do numbers 1 through... 57? Oh man, these are all kind of similar. Oh, so I just give you like one through, uh, one through uh, eleven, oh, oh and then number eighteen so as well. So uh, page six hundred fifty-seven, one through eleven, and then also number. I know it's way far away, but I want you to try number eighteen as well. You gave us a lot of work tonight. Yeah, I think you should be able to do it. Well, you guys have like some time to get started right now. Okay. I'm going to write it on the board here, Derek.